A reading from the book of Genesis. Israel loved Joseph best of all his sons, for he was the child of his old age, and he made him a long tunic. When his brothers saw that their father loved him best of all his sons, they hated him so much that they would not even greet him. One day, when his brothers had gone to pasture their father's flocks at Shechem, Israel said to Joseph, Your brothers, you know, are tending our flocks at Shechem. Get ready. I will send you to them. So Joseph went after his brothers and caught up with them in Dothan. They noticed him from a distance, and before he came up to them, they plotted to kill him. They said to one another, Here comes that master dreamer. Come on, let us kill him and throw him into one of the cisterns here. We could say that a wild beast devoured him. We shall then see what comes of his dreams. When Reuben heard this, he tried to save him from their hands, saying, We must not take his life. Instead of shedding blood, he continued, just throw him into that cistern there in the desert, but do not kill him outright. His purpose was to rescue him from their hands and return him to his father. So when Joseph came up to them, they stripped him of the long tunic he had on. Then they took him and threw him into the cistern, which was empty and dry. They then sat down to their meal. Looking up, they saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead, their camels laden with gum, balm, and resin to be taken down to Egypt. Judah said to his brothers, what is to be gained by killing our brother and concealing his blood? Rather, let us sell him to these Ishmaelites instead of doing away with him ourselves. After all, he is our brother, our own flesh. His brothers agreed. They sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver. Verbum Domini. Remember the marvels the Lord has done. When the Lord called down a famine on the land, and ruined the crop that sustained them, he sent a man before them, Joseph, sold as a slave. They had weighed him down with fetters, and he was bound with chains, till this prediction came to pass, and the word of the Lord proved him true. The king sent and released him, the ruler of the peoples set him free. He made him lord of his house and ruler of all his possessions. Lexio Sancti Evangelii Secundum Matthäum. <clears throat> Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, Hear another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. 
Then he leased it to tenants and went on a journey. When vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to obtain his produce. But the tenants seized the servants, and one they beat, another they killed, and a third they stoned. Again he sent other servants, more numerous than the first ones, but they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, thinking, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to one another, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and acquire his inheritance. They seized him, threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. What will the owner of the vineyard do to those tenants when he comes? They answered him, he will put those wretched men to a wretched death lease his vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the proper times. Jesus said to them, Did you never read in the scriptures the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? By the Lord has this been done, and it is wonderful in our eyes. Therefore I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that will produce its fruit. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they knew that he was speaking about them. And although they were attempting to arrest him, they feared the crowds, for they regarded him as a prophet. Verbum Domini. This account in the first reading of Joseph, this beloved son of Israel, of Jacob, uh, is probably among the most beautiful stories in sacred scripture. And we are clearly to see uh, in this account a foreshadowing of the saving mystery of Christ. He who was beloved by his father, and considered almost his only son, although he had um, the 12 sons, uh, Joseph was the son of the woman that he loved. And so he gives them this special tunic. Uh, And this is a sign for us, or we're to see in Joseph this type of Christ, uh, this type of Christ or foreshadowing of Christ Um, clothed in this garment of glory by his father. He shares his father's glory. And yet, in becoming man, that garment is stained by blood. And taking on, assuming a share in our humanity, isn't that, in essence, what we as Christ's brothers brought back to the father? The brothers of Joseph, who had sold him into slavery, put blood on this beautiful tunic that Israel had made for Joseph, and they hand this to this man, and he weeps bitterly that his son is dead, his son has been killed. And it's really this, uh, we all know that he's living, uh, but we know that this son, Joseph, has been betrayed uh, by his brothers. He's been sold as a slave by his brothers. Ultimately, he's been sold as a slave for his brothers. And isn't this what we know about Jesus, that he became a slave for us uh, in order to give us freedom, in order to obtain for us our freedom through his slavery? As I've already said, he's, he's one who is considered dead. In his father's eyes, he's dead. And yet we know that he is alive. And as we continue this account, when the famine enters the land, and here go these brothers in to get help from this great figure in Egypt, and they do not recognize him. It's because of the blindness of sin that we do not recognize Christ. And so he says their names. He tells them, I'm your brother. And he shows them mercy. I think that is one of the uh, most profound 
and moving accounts, as I've already said, one of the most moving accounts of Scripture. I'd encourage you to take it up today. On this Friday in Lent, when we're supposed to be quiet, when we're supposed to be united with Christ and his suffering, pick up the book of Genesis and read uh, that account of Joseph greeting his brothers, how he weeps because they do not recognize him how he weeps when he reveals to them who he is. They who thought he was long gone is standing before them alive, but he forgives them. And this is something that is almost beyond belief. And I know we've shared this before in homilies. You know, most of us in that condition would have wanted to take those brothers, each and every one of them, by the throat and told them, now you're gonna experience what I experienced. Now you're gonna feel what I felt. And Joseph didn't do that. You know, he showed them mercy, he delighted in seeing them. And in doing that, the hard thing is they had to go back and tell their father, guess what, you know, your son who you have wept for, who you've mourned for all these years, he's living. And they couldn't blame anybody else but themselves. They had to own up to what it is that they did. It wasn't a punishment upon them, it was bringing them into the truth. And this is what mercy does. When Joseph showed mercy, these men who are living this lie, who are ultimately separated from their father through their lie. You know, they had to go back and share with him the truth, and in doing so, they were restored to this, their true sonship. They were restored to friendship with their father. And isn't this what we all desire? Now, that account in scripture, which is historically accurate. It's not there as a fairy tale for us, but it points uh, for us to the true reality of our redemption, that our brother who we sold into slavery is, stands before us alive and shows us mercy. He reconciles us with one another and he restores us to our proper state of sonship with the Father and friendship with God.